please. Hello, uh, good morning and welcome to, to this uh, webinar in the context of the EU Green Week. Uh, the topic of today is how to make regional and local economies more circular. And um, uh, we have the pleasure to have for the introduction Navarra's uh, uh, Regional Minister for Citizens Relations, uh, Ana Oyo. Uh, welcome, Ana. Thank you very much, Beatrice, and good morning and welcome to this conference organized by the delegation of the government of Navarra in Brussels. A meeting that is part of the European Green Week and the way analyzes one of the main challenges we are facing how to make regional and local economies more circular. There are certain challenges in strategic matters that cannot be separated from the European context, as they are shared with other regions and countries. They are, in short, common to the Union. The times that contemporary social cities are going to require a collective effort to explore how to live better together. And this sense, the regional institution failed challenged by the European Commission's call to co design our future. To implement the Green Pact, the European Union's response to climate and environmental challenges with a view to present and future generations. In short, building sustainable, resilient, and socially just communities. Navarra's commitment to the circular economy proves to be aligned with European policies with whose symbiosis we are actively working. With the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, five of whose 17 goals are related to the circular economy. With the European Green Pact, through the collection of policy initiatives with the objective is achieving climate neutrality by 2030-50. With the Circular Economy Action Plan for a cleaner and more competitive Europe. With the Union's taxonomy through the classification system for environment sustainable economy activities. For this reason, we are pleased, pleased to come together in events such as today a day in which we will have the opportunity to share the good practices in this area deployed by various, uh, various regions and cities in countries such as Sweden, Belgium and Denmark, without forgetting our own experience, the Navarra Circular Initiative about with, with uh, Virginia Gomez Oñate, representing the Society for the Development of Navarra, Sodena, will be more details. The program will be closed by the Director General of External Action, Sergio Pérez. The kind of society we want is based on the general interest, welfare and progress. And it's a model that can only, only be guaranteed with the continuous effort of all citizens and their public authorities. And this is where the driving and agency's role of the institution comes into play with conferences such as the one that brings us together today to policies, showcase knowledge and specific ideas, share experience and promote synergies. Because in this share, not only companies, agents and entities will be individually, but the community as a whole. Thank you, therefore, to the speakers who are with us and to all today or for you for attending this session, which we hope will also be enriched by your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anna, for your introduction. Now we will start our exchange of uh, good practices between two regions and two municipalities. Each of them will have uh, 12 minutes. And after this, we will have a uh, time for discussion and Q and A's uh, in case you would like to already send uh, your questions uh, in the questions and answers section. Uh, so we start with the cities of uh, Malmo, a circular journey with Emma Borgenson, project manager of the city of Malmo.
Hi, good morning, buenos días a todos. I'm Emma. I work for the city of Malmö in Sweden. I'm a product manager in circular economy. And I will share with you uh, the city of Malmö circular journey today. And I'm on a train, hopefully, from um, Budapest to Berlin at the moment. But hopefully my connection is okay, so I could be with you in the chat and answer questions if you, if you have some. And what I will share to you today are just timeline of our circular journey, so you can see some of the things that have happened during the last 10 years. Then I will dig in into three topics that I think are relevant when you try to foster a circular economy in your region or city. One is planning, how you plan the city. Second is collaboration, how you as a city collaborate with other initiatives and stakeholders. And then procurement, circular procurement, which is one of the topics I personally have been working on for the last couple of five years. Then just some lessons learned. And I will now just in a few minutes try to say something about what happened for the last 10 years. So I would say that our journey began in 2013 with an internal uh, reuse platform for furniture. Also at the same time, one library started uh, lending tools, so not only books to the citizens. We started to explore industrial urban symbiosis in the Harbour area in Malmö at the same time. Then the planning of Sege Park began about uh, 2015, uh, which I will mention soon. A leisure bank uh, started in uh, 2018 also where the citizens can lend stuff for free and it's city of Malmö who runs this. Also at the same time we saw that there were so many sharing initiatives in Malmö not only from the city of Malmö but from other from businesses from organizations. So we started something called a smart map where you could where the citizens and visitors could see what kind of sharing initiatives are out there. In 2019, we did our first procurement, circular procurement, and that was for furniture. Same year, uh, the local roadmap for climate neutral construction was founded. Uh, in about two years ago, uh, SIPTEX, the world's first automatic sorting facility for textiles, opened in Malmö. And it's not run by the city, but it's run by the uh, the waste company, which is partly owned by the city. And uh, last year, a first bigger like circular demolition uh, was done with calculations, etc. And then, of course, in 2021, we had our new uh, uh, environmental program. And there, one of the goals are um, circular economy and increase resource efficiency. And with that, we're also now creating a circular roadmap for the city of Malmö. And now moving into the three uh, topics. I will give some insight about Sege Park. It's a new city district. It's being built now as we speak. And it's a testbed for a sustainable uh, living and for sharing economy. And it should be affordable to live there and you should be able to live sustainably. And it's really been a journey. It started many years ago and from the start it's been individual sustainability coaching and talks with the developers and the city together with uh, the developers have tried to find solutions for, for the sharing possibilities. And there is now uh, NGO working with the sharing possibilities so that people will have access to mobility, will act, have access to tools, they can swap clothes, uh, they can have um, kitchens bigger than the sm smaller kitchens in, in their own um, apartment, etc. And uh, I would say that uh, hopefully we thought that we would have a contract between the NGO and the developers but as you know when you're trying out new things it takes time. Um, also a circular 
mobility hub uh, is has been built in Sege Park. It's been built in a way so it's easy to reconstruct if we don't need as much cars in the future. It's also being built in, uh, in wood and uh, it has many circular aspects to it. And there you could land uh, EV cars, uh, also like bikes, etc. So you don't need to own your own uh, mobility. Also in this, uh, this uh, area, it used to be a hospital area. Um, and um, also <clears throat> we have kept a lot of the old buildings, so they have been renovated rather than uh, demolished. But this is really a journey and if you want to know more about Sega Park, just let me know. But I think that in city planning we can do a lot to make it easier for the citizens to live uh, circular and sustainable. And uh, also, of course, you know, the construction industry is a big polluter and a lot of emissions comes from that uh, from that area sector. Uh, so in 2019, one municipal representative from the city planning office and th six companies and cluster organizations started to talk about how we could make a local roadmap for climate neutral construction sector. And uh, they thought that the industry was ready for this in Malmö because since the beginning of the century, we, we have worked with sustainability in our different um, city districts. And we have been in collaborating with developers and organizations trying to create um, sustainable uh, areas. I guess the focus has been a lot on um, energy, but now it's also other kind of components. And they form this local roadmap. Uh, it was just the um, seven uh, organizations from the beginning but it was the right organizations. And like I said, the industry was ready for this. And today there are 200 connected organizations. All developers must start at least one climate neutral uh, project until 2025. Circle economy is one of the targets among many, but many, many of the developers trying to work with circle economy. And also collaboration, of course, is one of the key ways to foster a circular economy. I think this is such a good example of that. Uh, I haven't been personally involved, but other colleagues have been, and of course the 200 outwarder organizations. Then moving on to uh, my baby, uh, circular procurement. We started in 2018-19 uh, with um, circular furniture. Then we procured um, reused secondhand furniture. And of course, we also included repair, buying back systems. Then later, when we procured new furniture, we also had uh, circular aspects like spare parts, circular design, etc. And you could really see that the suppliers here for um, reused furniture, they are really our carrier of this message. We have also created a priority list. Uh, so that um, buyers in the city of Malmö know uh, how to um, prioritize uh, when it comes to furniture. And you could also see with reused furniture that often gives a better economy since these furniture are cheaper. Uh, we have been on a project called ProCirc for the last four years, and there we had some pilots. One of them were circular signs and navigations, and this is signs outside and inside buildings. And circular aspects there were reuse, repair, and recycle. And same with uh, furniture uh, suppliers, for, um, the suppliers for reused furniture. There's been a really good collaboration between the supplier and the procuring organization. And this supplier is really, um, a, um, really motivated in circular economy. And we have opened up for circular innovation during the contract period. And it's really paid off. And one of the cutest 
uh, example is prolonging the life cycle of baby strollers for preschools. So here the contract's been a lot of uh, spare parts uh, and maintenance as the key circular aspects. And of course you want to know what this have resulted in. So we just did a LCA, life cycle analysis, for the sinus contract. And when we upgrade a sign as the one you see here uh, on the picture, when we upgrade it, instead of buying a new sign, we save 85% of the CO2 equivalents. And when it comes to baby strollers, uh, we don't know yet because um, it has to run for a couple of years to see the results. But if, if we can prolong the life of about three years, we know that we can save about 40% of CO2 emissions. And with furniture, we save about 200 tons of CO2 equivalents per year when we buy reused instead of new uh, furniture. So just some small tips. This is mainly based on um, lessons learned from uh, procurement, working on circular procurement. Start with something easy that are likely to become a success. Don't try to find the perfect, perfect circular solutions from the beginning. Then, of course, find your champions, entrepreneurs, enthusiasts. I guess that's with all of these three examples that I give. They were really, um, really champions that have been pushing this work forward. Monitoring. It's difficult, but valuable. Don't try to look for the perfect monitoring. Just start digging where you are and communicate. Even if you're not perfect, start to communicate. And then you will also find people who like to collaborate uh, with you. And this was it for me. <clears throat> if you want to know more, just contact me via email or at LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, now we, we travel from uh, Sweden to Navarra, and we have uh, uh, Virginia gomez Oñate from Sodena, our development agency in Navarra, who is going to present Navarra Circular, our uh, special public-private uh, partnership initiative. Uh, thank you, Beatriz, for the introduction and the invitation, and also for organizing this interesting webinar. We are all learning a lot. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can see it all. And now in, is it, is it okay now? It isn't, yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as Beatriz was, was mentioning, I'm going to present Navarra Circular, which is a public-private uh, initiative where we try to foster the adoption of circular in, um, economy in companies. I'm not going to go into detail on the policy background, I think, and regulations. Uh, Europe has a very clear goal to be climate neutral by 2025 and is regulating accordingly. And uh, the same uh, is valid for, for Spain. So there is a pile of uh, legislation that is coming up uh, for everybody and especially will impact uh, companies. And therefore, at the, at the region, we decided to support our uh, our companies in this transition a bit in advance before the legislation is coming so that they, it can become a competitive advantage uh, for them and they are ready uh, and prepared by the when the time comes. I'm also not going to go uh, to enter into detail into um, all the things that happened in Navarra around uh, circular economy. Uh, but as Malmo was saying, it's something that it's also, uh, we are working on it for uh, several years. And we had uh, an innovative waste uh, law in uh, 2017, where there was a fund, uh, we call it the waste fund, was uh, once in, in states, in stated, um, where all the, the dumpings at the, at the landfill had uh, an extra charge and that became a fund uh, to, to finance uh, innovative projects on valorization of, of waste materials. And already in 2019, um, the region approved an agenda for the development of circular economy uh, in the region. Um, but it was not until last year, 2022, 
when we really started articulating this this agenda and uh, landing it into into the today's life and that was uh, thanks to the agreement of the of three ministries in uh, navarra which was the the environment ministry the economic development ministry and the citizen relationships uh, ministry which uh, the three of them decided to work uh, together on the same direction and then that was the 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 how navarra circular was born uh, here what i wanted to represent is that there were already many instruments in the region related to uh, to circular circular economy and we had a strategic framework i've already mentioned the circular economy agenda but in our uh, regional uh, smart specialization strategy for sustain for sustainability circular economy was one of the focus uh, that was uh, agreed as as a priority and as a transition for all the economic uh, access of the region and we had also uh, some training we had a, a specific uh, master on circular economy uh, grants and subsidies of the of the government they had already some criteria and some extra points for uh, circular economy uh, criteria and of course there were some r d projects um that uh, that were directed to to the to circular economy i'm not going to enter into into details if you are interested uh, we can discuss them later but what Navarra Circular did was to put an umbrella, a common umbrella, amongst uh, uh, all the initiatives that were already happening in the region. What you can see in the center, this uh, Superman and Superwoman, is uh, something that our economic uh, minister likes, but he likes to present Navarra Circular as uh, an office of uh, supermen and superwomen that go to visit uh, all the companies in the region so it's really uh, about rising awareness and supporting them in their specific needs in the um, in in this transition um the for the governance uh, navarra circular we report directly to the steering committee of our strategic uh, um, of our smart specialization strategy and uh, as I already mentioned, is uh, is composed by three uh, ministries of the of the government. But we also have two public companies, which are uh, the environment management company uh, GAN and uh, Sodena, the regional development agency. And we have also a private uh, association for companies, uh, La Samia, for one of uh, the areas of Navarra which is has been working with us uh, from the beginning and is part of the of what we call office and coordination team and uh, we have also joined um, with a specific technical support which has been a multi year uh, a public uh, well multi year procurement for uh, a specific knowledge on uh, circular economy when uh, we launched uh, the initiative that was october 2022 we had uh, some specific uh, objectives and indicators with a, a time frame of uh, three years until uh, 2025 and our objectives uh, are to maybe yeah it's some it's clearer to see it in this slide so we we want to reach at least 200 companies uh, adhere to the initiative how we work is is by a system of uh, of uh, membership, so to speak, where the companies they uh, they decide uh, this they they apply to become member of the initiative, and they commit to work and to make uh, projects in the broad sense on circular economy. And this is what is the most interesting part for us is that the companies really implement individual or, or collaborative uh, projects around uh, circular economy um, we also want to uh, to promote and to raise awareness so we want to uh, create uh, job oriented uh, training for 200 students until 2025 where uh, companies can uh, maybe um, um, use or or make use of these students specialized on circular economies to implement their own 
projects. Uh, training is very important. We started already last year with uh, training for the public administration and the, and the public entities. And uh, we, uh, we have already um, given training for more than 100 uh, people, civil servants, and, um, and there are more um, trainings coming, coming uh, this year. We also want to analyze and diagnose, we say, uh, at least six value chains in the, um, along, along uh, these three years with the, with the objective to really identify gaps and to promote green employment and green businesses uh, so that we can, by identifying these gaps, uh, promote new companies that can be um, implemented in the, in the region. For this year, this year we have started with the automotive and the um, and the construction uh, value chains. Construction, because as uh, Elma was saying, is one of the most important uh, sectors uh, when it comes to circular economy and automotive as well, because it is very uh, it's very um, it's going through a very uh, yeah, I heard a specific transition towards electric uh, mobility, and it's a very important economic sector also in our region. Um, yeah, I'm not going to enter into details, but we have uh, uh, an action plan uh, for uh, 2023 for this year. Um, yeah, going into detail into specific actions in, in to achieve our goals. And especially what I wanted to uh, point out here is that we have a very uh, or a lot of uh, transversal, we call it transversal uh, actions because the circular economy certainly you don't do it alone. And um, when when we call, uh, when we are talking about companies, we are also including uh, tourism and, uh, and commerce. And uh, we work also at several levels uh, related to not only with companies, but also in the in different, different geographical um, uh, configurations. We don't forget the public sector and of course the foreign collaboration is also very important. This is, uh, that's why also the ministry is part of the initiative and uh, certainly communication and awareness as Elma was saying is one of the most important actions that uh, you should start with. Um, relating the, related to the services that we offer to the companies, when they adhere to the, um, to the initiative, um, they can, they can, it's not an obligation, but they can uh, get access to a, a diagnosis on circular economy. So they, they get a specific picture of how they are related to circular economy, uh, circular economy. And they also get a roadmap uh, with uh, three years in implementation actions that they can uh, do to get, to move into the transition towards the circular economy. We support them in all uh, what is individual and collaborative projects. What we try to create a platform where companies of different sectors can can meet in in different frameworks. We organize or we try to organize at least one event uh, per month. Um, and the, the the main idea is to to foster these collaborative projects and this uh, industrial symbiosis that was also mentioned by by Anna. We don't do any we don't give any type of a stamp or certification, uh, but we support them on selecting uh, or, or deciding which type of certification will be the best for them. We have compiled uh, the different. Um, uh, certifications that uh, are now in the market. It's not, not an exhaustive list, but the most important of them so that uh, they can decide on which um, type of certification is the most interesting for their needs. I've already mentioned the uh, the access to, to students. Uh, that's more for the midterm. And uh, of course, they, we we support them also um, with the education and training of uh, of the employees, uh, and for that we also work with uh, with the governmental uh, service for for employment. We have created uh, working groups. Um, 
we we have started with a working group on the manufacturing of uh, automotive parts. Um, Navarre has also a strong uh, economical acts on remanufacturing and uh, remanufacturing of automotive. And therefore we started with it. And now we are um, studying uh, how to implement a working group related to plastic, since it's a very hot topic on uh, nowadays. Um, related to specialized inf information, we are talking here about the studies on on the value chains for the different sectors. And we will also study important materials and material flows um, in the region. And here, yeah, I just I want to, to mention a few examples of initiatives that we have done until now. Uh, we, for, for the rise of uh, awareness, what we did is uh, different um, we went to all the areas of Navarra with um, um, with our ministers to to promote uh, the initiative and to promote the circular economy, and what we did also is we try to put uh, into the spot best practices of uh, companies that were already from that region. I think that worked uh, pretty pretty good, pretty well to give some visibility to the best practices or to the local best practices. Um, during that uh, series of, of events, what we discovered are, uh, or we identified uh, territorial, what we call territorial challenges. Um, the north of uh, the region, we have an, or an issue with the, the Lacha ship wool. So we are uh, supporting them on uh, finding valorization ways uh, for this uh, wool, which uh, nowadays is a cost for the farmers to, to get rid of. And um, in the the south part of uh, the region, it's uh, very intense or very well known for uh, for uh, for the their vegetables, and uh, therefore we had some food byproduct uh, opportunities. Let's put it like that. And we are also um, studying about the chemical plastic uh, recycling in the whole region. Are you? already mentioned the, the working groups and of course we also work mm -hmm. hard on the yeah. external uh, sorry. Okay. yeah yeah i'm uh, i'm almost done uh, the external visibility and uh, we are also working on the um, uh, regional innovation values we are currently working uh, to uh, looking for um, partners uh, to to conclude the uh, the uh, project proposal. Just to give an idea, we have until now 75 companies, which represent uh, 38,000 employments and more than 10,000 uh, million euros of, of billing. And we're also working on um, a circle of collaborators because uh, yeah, we, we work with them to get uh, to reach further on different uh, companies. Um, yeah, and that's it. And how to access the services is very easy. Just go to the website. Uh, all the services are subsidized and uh, the, the, the membership is also uh, subsidized uh, by the government. Yeah, that was it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Virginia. Uh, now from Navarra, we go to Flanders, uh, here closer to us, to our delegation. And we have Verle Laveur, who is going to tell us about the uh, Green Deal on circular construction amongst other initiatives. Yes, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would like to start with um, the ambitions. Um, as Virginia and Emma said, uh, it's important to start with uh, the goal. Where do you want to go to? And in Flanders, we are a small region, uh, not a lot of space. So already in the 80s, we were uh, working on um, solutions for waste. And then in the beginning of the millennium, it was uh, all about circular economy. It, it began with material resources, uh, but then uh, we went to uh, the idea that you cannot stay in a circular uh, in recycling economy, but we should shift to a circular economy because in Europe, as you know, we don't have a lot of resources. 
Um, in Flanders, we have specific uh, goals because if you have a goal, uh, all companies and, and regional uh, authorities, they will invest more uh, time and money into circular economy. So what we would like to reach is a 30% reduction of uh, material footprint uh, by 2030 and a decoupling of uh, this material footprint from consumption. As uh, was said before also is that you cannot do this alone. So we have organized uh, ourselves in a public private uh, governance. Uh, this governance um, has stakeholders from uh, the whole um, regions or, or uh, topics of uh, society. So we have several governments like uh, innovation, uh, economy, uh, environment, uh, but also local authorities, civil society, all kinds of um, um, environmental so associations, etc. Industry, all sectors are uh, represented in our uh, steering group. Uh, the financial world is really important if we want to uh, make this shift. And then research institutes. And uh, of course, we uh, look and in get inspired and inspire a federal uh, government and also European uh, action plan. How do we do this? So it's a public-private effort, and then we go into uh, depth. So we started first with uh, general sensibilization, but since uh, three years or four years, uh, we have now uh, strategic agendas, which means that uh, each topic, like circular construction or, or, or water loops or the others, uh, they all have a public and a private coordinator. They have action plans and really uh, concrete actions to get to their ambitions specific for that um, for that uh, sector. Of course, we have uh, uh, for everyone a big uh, roadmap uh, where we want to get to. And we have seven levers, uh, levers who can uh, find solutions for common bottlenecks, uh, but also um, look at uh, opportunities that are uh, relevant for all of those uh, sectors. So it's like uh, policy, but also circular procurement, which I'm going to tell you a bit more about, communication, research, innovation, innovation and entrepreneurship, financing, and of course, the jobs and skills that are really important. Um, the research, research Institute is a collaboration between several uh, research institutes and universities. And what they did is they created a monitor, uh, a macroeconomic uh, monitor to see if we are going in the right direction and what are um, the, the progress that we are making in our goals. Okay, then I want to go into circle procurement as one example. Um, we started in 2004. 15, I think, with the Green Deal circular procurement, in which we had a uh, hundred participating uh, organizations and 50 like consultants or federations who also wanted to learn about this uh, circular procurement. And uh, everything is on the website circleprocurement.be. What we created with the experiments and the insights that we got from these experiments uh, was an uh, ambition chart. And this ambition chart helps procurers um, to describe what they need. They can choose for some of those uh, ambitions and then they can decide which strategy they like most or they can let the supplier choose. Like an example, um, if you have your ambition to reduce the total amount of materials, you can choose for internal sharing. Uh, a lot of uh, authorities have a lot of uh, material and they don't know it often from one department to the other. So they can uh, share or um, look at refurbishing, uh, like the example that Emma gave, but uh, there's another project in, in Flanders too. But another ambition could be extend useful life, uh, like, for example, uh, upgradable products or a contract where you pay for lux and not for the material. Uh, another can, can be on, on the goal to maximize uh, user, reusability. And then it's important to choose products that are designed for disassembly, for example, like this uh, building materials uh, without cement. 
What is also really important in circular procurement is that you take the time to go into discussion with your suppliers to know what is already possible or where they could be after two years, for example, if they are not uh, so far yet. On our website, circularprocurement.be, you find for each product group a lot of information, uh, insights from the experiments, uh, publications, examples for tenders uh, and cases uh, like this and little movies. So I uh, suggest you to go to this website. Then, as Emma said, we are part of ProCirc. It's a European project in which we wanted to uh, get our lessons learned from Flanders also uh, into European level. Um, there are many uh, tools. It's almost finished, this project. Um, a guidance, if it's new for you, it's, uh, I suggest you go through this guidance because it helps you each step of your procurement process. There are also um, tools uh, to organize uh, workshops and you have a lot of uh, examples in pilot projects. Uh, well described also the impact, etc. And then the circular built environment. Um, what is important is that we in Flanders uh, use this integrated approach where we um, had an interaction between research uh, experiments from, um, there were 150 experiments and uh, levers uh, like, like procurement or others uh, to change policy and the market. Also a green deal on this, uh, 350 participants. It's already finished, but you can find all information also on the website. What was specific about this is that um, we also had, besides the, uh, the, the normal experiments from the Green Deal, we also had um, subsidized projects who wanted uh, to uh, tackle one or two um, systemic barriers. And so they tested solutions on these uh, systemic barriers uh, that uh, hinder the transition to a circular construction. Also on this website, uh, bouwen.vlaanderen.circulair.be/in in English, um, you can find a lot of information and cases. Then on cities and citizens, um, already some years ago, we were part of uh, the urban agenda on circular economy. And there on this website, you can find a lot of information if you are a city and you want to change and you want to uh, get into the circular economy, uh, this can help you. This slide we made uh, to convince politicians uh, to invest in circular economy because for a city it's important that they have support, of course, uh, and this means or this explains why it's so important. A really important lesson learned is that in a city uh, or a municipality, it's important uh, that it's not uh, circular economy is not from one department, from the environmental department. No, it's something for each department and they have to collaborate between uh, each other. Um, as a city, you can stimulate entrepreneurs and innovation. You can reorganize your own uh, local uh, strategies or procurement strategies and you can stimulate citizens' initiatives. On this website, circulargovernance.city, you can find a lot of cases and you can use this uh, template also to fill it in for your own municipality. Uh, what do you do is you explain very shortly what the story is behind the facts. Uh, who talked to whom, uh, what was the uh, lesson learned, uh, what changed uh, the policy, and what were the takeaways? And then uh, you can see which departments within the municipality work together. And then you can see, okay, what did they do uh, on local, uh, on their own um, strategy or in citizens initiatives or with the entrepreneurs. And these are the strategies on circularity. Another thing that we started later on was uh, the uh, social and circular hubs. Uh, this was an initiative where uh, about 12, I think, uh, hubs are created and supported to help regular and so uh, social companies to work together. 
um, to create circular business, circular products, but also new employment. Uh, these are some examples like materials for building construction uh, sector, uh, like um, um, leftovers from salmon to make new uh, tasteful food, um, um, candles from uh, coffee grounds. So many examples uh, and interaction. And then what Virginia also said, is train the trainers is so important. So we have a network uh, for cities and municipalities to work together and to learn from each other. And we give them information. Um, and uh, we have a circular ambassador program. And this is a program in which um, startups, uh, people from bigger companies, but also students come together and work uh, for uh, several weeks together to learn all about circular economy and to um, change their own business plan, for example. Um, last year it was in Flanders, this year it was for Belgium, and next year it will be um, open for everyone in Europe. So if you're interested, uh, please um, follow our website and you can find it here. Another way in which we um, interact with, uh, with, with people um, is our LinkedIn groups. We have one on construction, but that is in Dutch. But we also have one on uh, procurement, and this is uh, the LinkedIn group from ProCirc, from the international uh, project. And uh, we have many uh, more, even uh, in the meanwhile, members. And everyone can post examples there or questions, and people will help you. And this is the most important thing, I think, for Circle of Flanders, is that our secret ingredient is fun. We, uh, find it uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, to, to change uh, the economy. So these are some links. Uh, perhaps uh, one thing that I want to add is that on the 21st of March next year, there will be a big circle event, European in event in uh, Flanders. And you are all welcome. This was my presentation. Thank you very much, Berle. Thanks for this information. And now we go from Flanders to Denmark, to the municipality of Alborg. And we have uh, Martin Quintero Hansen, uh, who will tell us uh, some good practices in his municipality. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for inviting me to tell you about this, um, this project. Uh, I'll tell you about a, a project that we we finished uh, last year, but the concept is still running today, but but without the, the funds. Um, I am, uh, my name is uh, Martin Hansen, and I'm working at the Alba Municipality as a project manager in the Department of the Center for Green Transition. So uh, this is one of our projects. We have a, a lot of more, but uh, I think this one will, will fit into the, the, the theme, the uh, circular economy. Um the problem, the project started because we in, in Alborg and I guess and also in, in a lot of other cities, uh, there's pedestrian streets. As you can see, these uh, red lines is uh, the two pedestrian streets we have in, in Alborg, um, where there's a lot of small stores. And, uh, and we figured out that they were not sorting out their waste in a, in a very good uh, way. So. Um, Actually, they just, as you can see at the picture to the right, they was just storing it in the in the storage room, which is quite expensive when you're you're placed in the pedestrian streets. And then on a Sunday, when in the spare time, the owner will drive to to the store and pick up the the cardboard and plastic, and then again drive to the recycling site um, to get the, rid of it. So um, we want to, to create a new method and um, we want to use the, the unused capacity. As you can see here, we have a large mall and also here a large mall, very central in, the, in Albro. And um, I can hear there's something at the line. Um, okay, I'll try to get one. And they have a lot, they have their own 
compactors, carbon compactors and plastic compactors very central in the in the city. So we want to to make a system that could bring uh, the cardboard and plastic from the small cities to the larger cities, malls, uh, plastic and uh, carbon compactors, and then it will go out with the flow that already exists. Um, yes, so we created the FlexRAL project, which could be translated to flexible waste. Um, and we want to, to get a better environment handle of the waste for the smaller companies in Albor. It was a four year EU funded project. And the partner was uh, House Adventure, North Jutland, and uh, what I got, which could be translated as uh, raw and good, which both are uh, social economies, uh, companies, and then we have Recycle, uh, which is, uh, has developed a, a program where we could uh, collect all the data, um, and Home Runner, which is uh, a logistic company. And then we, of course, have uh, Alba Municipality and Alba University. Our role in this project was to, to be the facilitator and to do all the administration stuff. So um, the companies don't have to think much about uh, how to, to administrate all the funds. Yes, I'll just show you um, a video. I'll actually show you some videos, but this is the first one. Um, I just need to get some subtitles on it. So one second. We don't hear any sound. There's no sound? No. I can, then the subtitles will be, it's just, it's just the concept. Okay, and I'll just make the screen large again. Then I may be saying that it's uh, I have three other videos that also show the concept um, that I'm not sure that the sound will work as well, but there's still the subtitles on it as well. So I think we'll show it anyway. But then um, I'll just tell you a bit about the results from the project. Um, of course, we want to make it sustainable. So we, uh, we tested uh, four electrical, electrical cars or vans or cars or vehicles uh, in the entire project. And then we, um, we, there was also this uh, social dimension in the project. So totally we had uh, 24 people from the edge of the labor markets, flex jobs, people who can only work around 10 to 20 hours per week. And then we um, created four business models uh, totally, and um, and all four are still running today without the funds. Uh, and I'll show you some of the the concepts uh, in a, in a moment. Uh, totally, we uh, reduced around uh, 485 tons of uh, CO2. Uh, we figured out that uh, EPS was a very uh, was very good material to reuse and uh, recycled. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we collect around uh, uh, 80 tons of EPS, but it get uh, around 343 um, 
say CO2 emissions, but compared to car work, we nearly collected the same amount, but the CO2 emission was uh, quite lower. Yes, this video I want to show again is um, is there is more focused about reuse cardboard instead of recycling cardboard. Um, I know that's not the, the sound, but it's in Danish, so I don't think it's, it doesn't matter. There will be subtitles. You can try to activate the sound uh, in the, the case uh, dedicated to the sound. I can, I, I can, where can I do that? I think it's down the, the screen. I'm not sure about it, but um, but I'll, I'll let it go and then just see. That should be subtitles, and it should be all be translated to English. I hope that makes a view of how the concept is, uh, is working by the electrical vents and the, the people who are collecting it and the, how the capital is going to be used. Uh, I just want to show one last video and then I think also my time will be up. Um, Yeah, this video was just showing that we actually used the existing um, parcel vans that was uh, coming with parcels into the city. And we want to use the, the unused space in them to bring out the waste from the cities, from the small stores. And so we're actually trying to use the logistic companies to, to get rid of the waste. Yeah, as a conclusion, um, the municipality's role, my role, was to to administrate and be the idea generator. And um, I think it's important that let the SMBs do what they do best, do the practical work, and then of course we can, as a municipality, support them with the, with some administration stuff. Um, also create a project that you can that you actually can show it has been a huge uh, success here in, in, in Aalborg because our politic politicals uh, was very aware about this project because we could tell them come out and see this and uh, you can talk with the people who is engaged with the, the, with the project. Also collaboration with smaller and uh, larger companies, universities has been a, a great and huge success. Um, 
Finally, I just want to invite you all to, to this huge uh, conference in Arbor 2024 next year. Uh, it's the European Sustainable Conference uh, running from the 3rd to the uh, 3rd uh, October next year. Um, just uh, reach out to me if you want to hear more about it. And of, of course, also more about the, the flexible concept or the concepts um, here sustainable concepts here in Oldborough. Um, we'd like to show you all the all our, our work here, of course. And thank you. Thank you very much, Martin, and you all. Now, before the closing, we have 10 minutes for questions and answers and for a little debate. We've received uh, some questions in advance and also in the, in the little section down your screen. So we will take them um, first come, uh, first serve. Uh, we will ask the speakers, please, to, to provide a quick and straightforward answers so that we can cover all the questions. And here comes the, the first question. So it says the recycling of plastics continues to be a big problem since uh, the number of recycling cycles is, uh, is, is limited. Normally, no more than one cycle due to the fact that the material degrades and this becomes impractical. Therefore, the vast majority of plastic at the end of it is useful. Uh, life must be incinerated or done. What measures are proposed to solve this problem, uh, apart from reducing plastic consumption, of course? And what uh, initiatives are, are there in, in the administrations that were present today? Who would like to take it? I can I can open the, the session of answers. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the question. Uh, yeah, plastic is is a very clear hot topic and a difficult uh, subject to treat because of the properties and the cost that the material has that uh, has boost their their penetration even in uh, in applications that are farther than uh, than what they need only because of the cost down on um, with respect to other materials. Uh, answering the question, we are uh, really uh, very much aware of uh, that we need to improve the plastic uh, situation. Let's call it like that. We are doing a regional study on uh, on the plastic uh, to to have numbers and uh, and quantify, be able to quantify uh, what how much plastic is used, which type, and what is the flow of, of the plastic. There are also some uh, collaborative R and D uh, projects financed by the government that are working on replacing uh, plastic and uh, to replace um, the and to try to find uh, substitute materials that would um, be close to the to the characteristics of the plastics. And uh, with respect to Navarra Circular, we certainly are going to create a working group on that and to work further on the plastic and plastic recycling uh, and with an eye on the chemical recycling of the plastic. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Someone else would like to intervene. I know that Emma is, uh, is also in a train or in a station um, and she sent the, the message uh, uh, on the chat. Emma, would you like to intervene? Otherwise I can read your answer. Well, while she answers, if, if you want the uh, Martin or Berle, if you would like to, to say something about this. No, otherwise, I read the, um, the answer from Emma from the city of uh, Malmo. She says, plastic is a big problem, especially uh, the one made from petrol. In Malmo, the residual waste is being incinerated to district uh, heating and plastic waste that was thrown in the residual waste is causing emissions of CO2. Some solutions, better uh, post-sorting, new recycling facilities are being built in Sweden, minimizing plastic products, minimizing uh, plastic products made from petroleum. Um, that, that was it. Uh, so I go to the second question, which asks, uh, how do you relate in concrete the circular economy with the energy transition? Who would like to answer? I see you all uh, smiling. Yeah, I, I can take it again. 
Yeah, um, yeah. of course, uh, circular economy is a very ample and very broad concept, and energy transition is certainly one part of it. Uh, the government of Navarra, they are making a huge efforts on uh, the energy transition, especially because of the high prices of the energy that made uh, all companies and citizens uh, suffer. And they started the, a program called Energy Berry, the new energy, with more than with more than 20, 90 million euros um, assigned for uh, for companies and civil society on the energy transition. And I'm being short so that my colleagues also can answer. Emma also sent her uh, answer on the chat. I guess she cannot connect from the train. So uh, she says on the energy transition that the energy transition has to be done in a circular way by making sure that the components uh, in for, for example, electric cars and solar panels are circular. That is made by materials from renewable sources that the components can be repaired and that upgraded. And that is uh, at the end of life is, is reused or recycled. Um, so that, that. I, I can also add, uh, together with Emma, we are in process working on a joint statement of demand for um, electrical vehicle charges to uh, make sure that all the investments that go to that uh, those charges now, that they are uh, in a smart way and a long-term vision. So that, as Emma said, it's in, in uh, circular materials or with multifunctional um, and as a procurer, you can um, ask for some criteria specifically there on there. I will share the link to this joint statement of demand. If people want to join, they still can uh, join this uh, initiative. Right. Yeah, okay. I can also I can add something as well, uh, just shortly. We, in Albrook, we are trying to, to change all our energy uh, consumption in uh, our production by windmills and uh, solar panels and uh, uh, heating pumps created uh, all kinds of uh, types of uh, machines that could create uh, energy uh, to combine them and then of course uh, also create uh, what we call the carbon capture uh, we want to to take out the carbon and uh, create the fuel for planes outers and but in this project process, we need, we need a lot of energy. So we actually need more energy to, to get this uh, carbon capture, um, what's called a uh, theme to work. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, if you could please point out the key success uh, factors for the um, and, and the barriers encountered in the initiative that you presented, specifically on the cooperative relationship between political leaders and, and technicians. I, I can answer shortly that it's uh, really important to get the politicians um together with the uh, municipalities and cities uh towards um a common vision and not only the strategy but also the implementation so it's really important if you ask for your entrepreneurs to invest in circularity that as a government you also invest in circular procurement and that you train your uh, your uh, colleagues, and um, only then there will be change. Otherwise, it will be difficult. There is one last question, and like this, we cover everything. On the uh, particular case of the valorization of the uh, sheep's uh, wool, uh, la valorización de la lana de oveja. In case, uh, I don't know if this is too specific or if uh, someone would have a, a response on this. Otherwise, we can do it uh, via email afterwards. Yeah, well, we, we have started uh, working on that uh, on that project and uh, we have identified uh, several options that goes from uh, making a compost of fertilizer and you know, until isola isolation material, sorry. Uh, and now the situation is that uh, the farmers uh, are going to choose which are which is their 
their, uh, their favorite or the preferred option to treat the ghoul and uh, we will continue further on, on their choice. Thank you very much. Um, so we, we are approaching the end of the webinar and we have uh, Sergio Perez, our uh, General Director for Foreign Affairs uh, for the Government of Navarra, who will do uh, the closing. Hello, uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. Okay, so first of all, uh, apologies for the, for the noises that are um, uh, with me. I am in the airport, so uh, sorry if the if the audio is not uh, as uh, uh, as good as possible. I would like to thank all the colleagues that have been part of this seminar, especially Berli, Martin, Virginia, and um, and uh, Marcos uh, and Emma, uh, that uh, from different cities and regions of Europe uh, have uh, shared the experiences of the circular economy and how to make it our economies. Um, more circular. Uh, they are very, very good examples. We will uh, take note of, of some of them and uh, we will continue the collaboration and we'll um, see if there's an, any other possibilities of uh, getting this exchange of good practices all along together. Also, I would like to thank to the delegation of uh, the, uh, the EU delegation from Navarra in Brussels for the organization of this event and the attendees for being with us today uh, with this uh, super interesting event that we have um, organized. Um, just to let you know that, the, that our main objective as the general direction of external action is to align the policies, the EU policies that they are taking place in Europe with the regional policies. So one of our main duties are to examine it and to, um, and to study all the EU legislations, such as, uh, for example, with the Commissioner um, uh, von der Leyen, started with the EU Green Deal, and then all the uh, taxonomy, legislative power, and also the circular economy. The 15th of May, it was the revision of the eco circular economy amendment plan in order to get uh, more um, interaction with the EU industry um, EU industry and industrial plan. So our mission as general direction of external action is to get all the information from Europe and try to get it with the regional policies. That's why we are organizing these events and that's the context of being uh, with us today, uh, having this exchange of good practices on circular economy. And of course, the circular economy is one of the main bets of this government. We have been working on the several initiatives. Uh, Virginia explained before the circular economy, the Navarra circular, this public-private initiative, so I will not be redundant. But um, some other information that I would like to share with you is that we are very active also in sustainable financing. We have been, uh, we have been awarded by the um, Spanish um, institution of uh, sustainable finance as a best practice on our regional strategy in order to get the bonds on uh, on green bonds. This is the third year that we make this um, sustainable finance. And we are also, uh, this is a very good bet from our regional uh, ecosystem. That's also because we have our own taxation system. We are a region, Navarra, where we have uh, our own um, taxation system. So we have our own management of the, of the Depth. So it's a good point in order to redistribute all the um, uh, economy in, in our proper strategy. We have been also been awarded by a um, project pilot for the GRC, for the Joint Research Center and the Committee of the Regions that we are part as well, um, as being one of the nine pilot regions in order to deploy a sustainable development goal measures uh, how to make it more regionally. I mean, during this event, we have been um, so different sustainable development goals and how to comply with them. What, but we still in Europe, uh, we lack of a common system on how to measure the, uh, the goals that they are, we are achieving. So that's what we are doing with nine other regions in Europe and with this project project and the aim of this project will be um, trying to get a common standard on how to measure this uh, achievement on sustainable development goals. That's uh, another reason uh, to be proud of from, from our region. And, um, and also we are organizing, uh, I was last week in, in Dublin, in the ICR Plus uh, General Assembly, supposing the Navra Circular Initiative. I will be in this week 
in the Swedish presidency and on social economy, explained also the the Navarra Circular Initiative, but uh, more important, the links between circular economy and social economy, that we have several examples here in Spain and uh, in Navarra, uh, that uh, very good examples of SMEs that are working in these both ways, in social and circular economy, and a mix of them will be showcased next week. Yes, I, I will not be very extensive on my intervention, but I would like to uh, to have a few words uh, of recognition also for other partners of uh, of my region. Uh, we are celebrating this week the EU Green Week. Um, we are facing this. Uh, we are celebrating finishing this event uh, today, and, and it's going to be. It has been recorded, so all of you will uh, be able to consult all the information later. But at the same day, <clears throat> another project, the LC4 regions uh, interreg europe project has been showcased in brussels with the icr plus members with colleagues from the environment tomorrow will be take place another um, another event on raw materials uh, for critical materials where companies in in navarra will will explain their main uh, lacks of uh, raw materials or how how to use circularity in order to not uh, not to be dependent on on raw materials and critical materials, and a study will be showcased as well. And also we have a launch, and it will be presented tomorrow, a new chair on with the jointly with the Public University of Navarra on circular economy. So we are also making progress on educational system, especially those related with universities. Also on Friday, uh, our colleagues from Torrens and, and Electric Mobility are organizing an event on sustainable tourings and electric vehicle. I think one of the questions we're raised is relating this, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and in this, um, and in this uh, event, we will, we will show how the main uh, sustainable strategy on tourings can be related to the electric vehicle, especially with the charging points, which is one of the main uh, headache of the commission, uh, because in order to get this, transfer this transformation from um, uh, traditional cars or traditional movement into electric vehicles, we need these uh, charging points and, and we are making a lot of progress on that, also in Navarra, because uh, as the commission said, there are 60 kilometers from away from each other and we are making uh, charging points, uh, not 60 kilometers, but 50 kilometers, 10 kilometers uh, shorter, and we are, in, 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 uh, we are making a lot of progress on that. All of this just to show that Navarra is a very uh, green, uh, committed uh, region. Uh, since the point of the finance on uh, sustainability funds, also with the investment that we are making on R&D that was previously explained, participating in different events internationally uh, at the external action plan. And also a part of this EU Green Week, we are taking part of the EU Sustainable Energy Week that is taking place the 20, 22nd of, of June in Brussels. We are taking part also in the EU Hydrogen Week because hydrogen is one of another bets from our region. We are taking place as well in the European Waste of Reduction uh, Week uh, because we have uh, the highest, the highest um, point of uh, Spain in the waste reduction uh, strategy. So with all in all, what we I want to, uh, to make uh, clear is that we are a region where the green strategy has been very, very good um, supported, not only at political level, but also by companies, by, by society. And that's one of our main transitions that we are making. We are in a very good uh, point of making it, but we still need this collaboration, this international collaboration, at EU collaboration that we are doing each day. For example, with these uh, municipalities and regions like you uh, that have been sharing with us your good best practices, sorry, and um, I invite you to continue this good relationship between all the regions in with Navarra, and of course you are more than than welcome if you ever come to Navarra, and hopefully uh, we want to still collaborate with you um, in during at our European level and our international um, relationship that they are making. That's all for the moment. Thank you again for, for being with us today. Sorry again for the, for the noises, and I hope that you enjoyed this seminar. Uh, you learned a lot because the, the panelists, the speakers were 
uh, quite um, good professionals and I am very happy to count of them uh, today. And uh, we remain at your disposal if you require anything from the delegation of Navarra in, in Brussels or from the general direction of external actions, because we want a Navarra closer to Europe and more Europe in Navarra. This is our main claim. Thank you very much, all of you. I invite you to the next events taking place the first tomorrow in, in uh, La Fabrica de Goma for those who are in, in Navarra. And hope you uh, celebrate this evening week actively because we need a, Europe, uh, a greener Europe uh, in a greener world. Thank you very much and thanks for your attention. Thank you all. Bye-bye from Brussels.